All right, so let's start this video by going to um, Docker Hub. Let's do a quick Google for Docker Hub. And it'll take you here. You're going to have to go ahead and uh, sign up for an account. But go ahead and pause the video and sign up for Docker Hub account. So here I am, and inside of Docker Hub, we have all kinds of stuff that you can look for. Um, for example, up in the search bar, I can search for Minecraft, and we've got Dockers here that are, for example, the ITZG Minecraft server, updated seven days ago, 10 million downloads. Um, probably a pretty decent one. If we click in there, you're going to get information about it. Here's the Docker command that you just used to run that. We map port 25565, 25565. There's giving it that special name of MC so that it doesn't name it something crazy. Um, and we'll talk about how to get in and manage these things as we go. But that should be out of the box, man. That one should work. All right, what we're going to look for, though, is let's search for the U Ubuntu Docker. And if we look here, you'll find Ubuntu. And here's what these pages look like for Ubuntu. You can see we have 16.04 available. We have 14.04, which can be referenced by Xenial 2020916 or just Xenial. We could call 14.04 just by trusty. Um, 20.10 is the Devel. 20.04 is latest or focal. So we can call this particular um, Docker and pull it using these tags. All right, so let's jump back into our Linux box where we're doing all this work. And let's do a Docker pull Ubuntu latest, just like that. Now, in this case, we want to run this, not like the Hello World Docker. We want to run this, and we want to keep it running, right? So we're going to run it with docker hyphen T. No, docker run, excuse me. We're going to create a container from this Ubuntu latest image. Hyphen T, which means TTY, or it's a terminal that we can interact with, right? Um, hyphen D, which is, um, we're just going to stick this into daemon mode. Let's go ahead and give it a name. I'll call this my Ubuntu. You don't have to have the hyphen, something you want to call it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the Ubuntu image here that we just downloaded. All right, so go ahead and get that command in. You can see it's given us a hash here. And I can do a docker ps hyphen a. And you can see that we have um, docker and that hyphen t right there is um, essentially started slash bin slash bash for us on the within this containerized environment. You can see it was created seven seconds ago. It was up for six seconds, and it has a name, my Ubuntu. And the entry point command of bin bash is what's sort of keeping this Docker container open. So let's execute another bin bash. Um, command on this and let's sort of log into this server um, using docker commands because right now even if we had SSH installed on this docker we wouldn't be able to log into it because we're not binding any ports to the local machine. Um, so in any event, let's just do a Docker exec. We're going to run as, uh, we're going to run bin bash locally within this container, log into it from here using Docker exec hyphen I, which stands for interactive hyphen T again, stands for TTY. And we'll give it the name of the container that we want to execute this on. We're going to execute bin bash.
Excellent. Um, and so here I am after doing that. And you can see that instead of being root at the IP address, in this case, of my Amazon server, we now have a root at some other host and we're now logged into our container. So let's do an apt update inside of your container and it'll go through and it'll run apt update. This particular container is running very minimal um, programs here. Um, let's go ahead and do an apt install. Now, because this container is running minimal applications, if I were to even type pico test 123.txt, you'll say that pico isn't installed. So let's go ahead and do an apt install nano. And it gave us a few issues there, but let's see if it works. Pico test 123.txt. It does. So I'll put something in there. Control O to save. Control X to exit. And you can see right here at the root directory where we have all of our different folders here for Linux, you can see we have a file called text test123.txt. All right, so let's go ahead and exit out of this. And let's do a docker kill my Ubuntu. And we'll do a docker ps hyphen a. And you can see that it just exited because that's what docker kill did. Docker kill just killed that container. Now, when we first ran that container, we ran it with some parameters. We gave it a name, we put hyphen um, T for TTY, we did hyphen D, we wanted to kick it into daemon mode. So it has this entry point command of bin bash. This container has been set up. So it, all we have to do if a container that you have tried to run is not currently running, we just run it with docker start. Excuse me, we start it with docker start. Docker start my Ubuntu will start a container that is not already running. And if I were to now do my docker exec hyphen I hyphen T my Ubuntu bin bash, I do an LS, you can see that everything we did is there. So let's assume that this test one, two, three is some kind of a malicious program. Somebody has gotten on and they've changed the system without our knowledge. I'll go ahead and type exit and we'll do a docker kill my Ubuntu. We can do a docker rm my Ubuntu. We'll delete that container. And it's very easy now to run a new version of this called my Ubuntu if we want to. We can take that image that we pulled. We can start a new container with docker run. I can exec into it with bin bash. Pause the video. It's good to work with me on these things because if you work through it, it's going to be easier later on. When I do an LS, you can see that uh, that file that we added with Pico isn't there. But we have a problem, right? So when I type Pico, you can see Pico hasn't even been installed. So how can we make changes to it and then save those changes so that we can start them later. So let's look at that process. Um, go ahead and do an apt install nano on this fresh image. And I'll do an apt update because we're going to have to do that when we log into a fresh Docker image. I'll do an apt install nano. I'll do a pico test 123.txt. Put something in it, save it, execute, exit. So now we've got pico installed and you've got a file right there on the root of the file system. Pause the video, get to that point. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. So I'm going to do a docker uh, ps hyphen a and we can see that this Ubuntu image where we've installed pico and added that text file is there. Uh, we're going to do a docker commit and we'll go ahead and take the name. We may have to use the container ID over here for this, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna try it with the name. We're gonna do docker commit my Ubuntu, 
and I will call this Ubuntu underscore, I'll just give it my last name, Beck. And we're saying, okay, take this container and let's create an image out of that that we can use later if we need to. There we go. So now if I do a Docker images, you can see that I have an image called Ubuntu Beck. And I have that base image that we first um, pulled in called Ubuntu. So I've installed some things, I've placed them some things on the image, and now if I were to turn off um, this image, I can always start from this point and I won't have to reinstall Pyco anymore. But anything that happens after that, for example, bad guy gets in and installs malicious file, all I have to do is uh, docker kill my Ubuntu. Um, docker rm my Ubuntu right and then I can do my docker exec command docker run except we want to run from our committed image which is Ubuntu back and there we are we're back at it so um, in this particular video we learned to uh, pull an image identify tags on Docker Hub. We learned how to start an image so that it stays running. We learned how to use the exec command so that we could run bin bash. Uh, we learned about committing containers and uh, stopping containers, starting containers, and uh, destroying containers and images.